What up everybody? Instructor Beats back again here on Place Value Street with another Place Value lesson. So today we're talking about understanding the value of a digit. All right, let's drive down the street and see what our objective is today. Our objective today, today I will be able to understand how the position of a digit in the number affects the value of that digit. As we discussed in our understanding place value lesson, right? Throughout the world, the most common number system is the Hindu Arabic base 10 number system, all right? It's all based on the powers of 10. It is a positional number system where the position of a digit changes the value of that digit, right? For instance, if I put a five in the ones place, right? That would just be worth five. If I move that five to the hundreds place, right? Then all of a sudden that digit is now worth 500, right? And we'd actually have to put a zero in the tens and a zero in the ones, which leads us to our key thought for our lesson, okay? But I'm going to present it in two different ways, all right? The first way is using a very precise math vocabulary, all right? So in the Hindu Arabic number system, the contribution of a digit to the value of a number is the value of that digit multiplied by a factor determined by the position of the digit. What? All right, so that's very, very wordy, using very precise math vocabulary, and I'll kind of explain that in a second. Um, and so much easier to understand in more common language, right? The place value of a digit affects the value of that digit. All right, so that's kind of taking that and saying it in common language. Let's really break it down right here, okay? So here I have 511, all right? So I wanna know, what is this five worth? Now, many of you already know, right, that it's worth 500 because it's a five in the hundreds place. That's the common language. The place value of the digit affected the value of that digit, all right? But why? That's really what we want to look at in this video, all right? So everything in our number system based on the powers of 10. And so I'm going to write this down here, right? Here we had uh, 10 to the zero power, which is the ones place. This one would be one more power 10, so 10 to the first power is 10. Again, if you uh, don't understand this, check out our understanding place value lesson. Here we have the second position, right? 10 to the second power, which is the hundreds, right? Because that would have a value of 100, right? Value of 10. And then I'll just do one more. 10 to the third power, right, would be 1,000. 10 times 10 times 10, which is where we get the thousands place from, all right? So 10 to the second power, right, uh, is the second position to the left of the ones place, right? We know that's really equal to 100. And so what the digit five is telling us is we have five groups of 10 to the second power, right? That's what the digits tell us. Hey, we have five of these. So if we have five groups of 10 to the second power, right? That's really five times 10 to the second power because going all the way back to whatever you learned in third grade, right? Multiplication is groups of repeated addition, all right? And we know that 10 to the second power is really a 100. So if you had five groups of 100, right, then that five is really worth 500, okay? So going back to that really precise math vocabulary, the contribution of a digit to the value of a number. So I'm gonna write 511 up here. Well, the contribution to the overall value that this five is providing is 500, right? That makes sense. So the digit five is multiplied by a factor determined by the position of the digit. So in this case, it's multiplied by 100 because it is in the second position to the left of the ones place. So we really overcomplicated the whole process, but I really wanted you to understand why it's worth 500. Not that just because it's five in the hundreds place is worth 500. Let's take a look now at the one in the tens place, right? So obviously know that is going to be 10 because we go back to the uh, kind of common language, the place value of the digit affects the value of that digit. But let's really break it down, right? So the digit is a one, right? And what is it contributing to this 511, right? In other words, what's the value of just this one in the tens place? Well, we're gonna multiply it by a factor determined by the position of the digit, right? So the 10 is in the first position to the left of the ones place, otherwise known as the tens place. So that's gonna be, we're multiplying by a factor of 10. And again, this exponent up here, the power of 10 is kind of helping us 
uh, know the position that it was in, right? It's one to the left of the ones place. Well, 10 to the first power is just 10, right? We know that. So I'm gonna be multiplying this by a factor of 10, which would obviously just be 10. So this one is contributing a value of 10 to the overall value of this number. And then if we did it one more time, right, for this one right here, we know that the digit's a one. So I have one group of, and this is kind of in the zero position, right? This is where the whole symmetry of our place value goes around the ones place. So I'm multiplying it by a factor of, really, one, because 10 to the zero power is just worth one. So I have one group of one, which of course is one. And so the one in the ones place is contributing a one. So the overall value of this would be 500 plus 10 plus one, which we know is 511, right? And so again, kind of overcomplicating, but hopefully that really complicated definition is making more sense as we kind of walk through examples of this. Now, the reason we're kind of overcomplicating it is because eventually you're gonna be working in other base number systems, right? You might be doing base five, base four, might be doing binary, base two. And I want you to understand where those values of the digits come from in other place value systems as well. Let's take a look at an I do problem. So here I have just the thousands place, right? Just up to the thousands, here's my decimal. So I'm just gonna go ahead and write this kind of down right here. And I wanna know, hey, what is the value of this six? So the really easy way, right, is you have six groups of 100, right? Because it's six in the hundreds place. So you have six 100s, which is 600. That is the value that this digit is contributing to the overall value of 4,652. The long way is to realize that it is in the second position to the left of the ones place. So you had six groups of 10 to the second power or 10 squared, which we know is really six times 100, which still gives you 600, right? The contribution of the six to the value of the number was the value of the digit, which is six, right? Multiplied by factor, which is determined by the position of the digit. And we know the positions are where we're getting our powers from right there, right? So either way works, right? One way is obviously very quick and easy, and one way is a little overcomplicated, but the overcomplicated way will help you get a little bit farther in math. Let's take a look at this we do problem. So this one should be in your notes. So here I had four hundreds, five tens, six ones, three tenths and two hundredths. And I wanna know what is the value of the three, right, right here. And so I had three groups of a tenth, right? So three groups of one tenth, which means that value is three tenths. Looking at it kind of the long way, right? This would be the first position to the right of the ones place, which is why it's a negative one. And so you are gonna multiply the digit times a factor determined by the position of the digit. So the factor would be 10 to the negative first power because it's in the first position to the right, which that would just be 1 tenth, which again, just gives me 3 tenths. So either way, I come up with the same answer. All right, so here's our you try problem. Okay, so you're gonna prove the value of each digit. Notice I said prove, not just come up with the answer, but prove with kind of the complicated way, the value of each underlying digit for each number. Now they're all six, it made it a little bit fun. And so I gave you an example right here. So here's a six. It is in the zero position, right? So it's 10 to the zero power is a factor that I'm multiplying by. And I know that really 10 to the zero power is just one. So six times one, the value of that digit would be six. Now the easy way I would say you have six groups of one because it's in the ones place, which is six. But we're gonna prove it mathematically today. All right, so if you wanna start with the answer using the shortcut and then go back in and fill in the proof, that's totally fine. So go ahead and push pause and then push play when you're ready to check your work. So hopefully you just paused it and now you're uh, ready to check it, okay? So here we have the digit is a six. So this would be my 10 to the zero power, 10 to the first power, 10 to the second power, 10 to the third power. So the position would be the third position. So this is the base because we're doing base 10. That's the position it's in. So my equation is gonna be six times 10 to the third power. Well, 10 to the third power, 10 times 10 times 10 really has a value of a 1,000. So six groups of 1,000 would be 6,000. All right, next one, again, my digit is six. Now this one is in the second position to the right of the ones place in the decimal. So this would be 10 to the negative second power. 
So my equation would be six times 10 to the negative second power. Now negative second power is really just the hundredths place, right? So six groups of one one hundredth would be six one hundredths. And you don't need to simplify it for that. And then my last one, again, my digit is six. It is, here's my ones and my decimal. So this is gonna be in the first position to the right of the one in the decimal. So that is six groups of 10 to the negative first power, which we know is really just one tenth. So six times one tenth would be six tenths, all right? So hopefully you got those right. If not, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. I'm sure most of you guys could at least do the shortcut, and not really a shortcut, but the easy way to kind of think about it. But if you understand the proof and how we got to our answer, then you are ready. Welcome to the challenge zone. All right. So the challenge zone, if we use the same concept of a positional number system, but change it to a base four number system, what is the value of three in 332? All right. So again, now it's not base 10, it's base four. Go ahead and push pause. You might need to go back and rewatch the video to kind of see how we came up with the base 10 values, right, and the positions they were in. But give it a try and then push play when you're ready to check your work. So first of all, I have 332, okay, holes, which means my decimal would be right there, okay? So instead of this being 10 to the zero power, because it is a zero position, our base is going to change. This should be four to the zero power, which means this three is in the first position to the left, so it's gonna be four to the first power, and this position is gonna be four to the second power because it's in the second position left of the ones in the decimal place, which means four to the zero power, That's this is still the ones place, four to the first power, this is now gonna be the fours place, and then four to the second power this is going to be the 16s place. So I actually see now that I had uh, two threes. I'm not gonna edit it, because I want you to know that everybody makes mistakes. So the first one, my digit's three, and I'm multiplying that by a factor of four to the second power, right? Because it was in the second position, and we're a base four number system. So three times 16, so this three has a value of 48, all right? So now let's do this three right here. My digit's three, and I'm multiplying that by a factor of four to the first power because it's in the second, sorry, it's in the first position to the left of the ones in the decimal. So that'd just be three times four, which gives me a value of 12. So that three is contributing a value of 12 to my overall number. So just kind of for fun. This is so fun. What is the value of 332 if we were talking in base 10? So this three, right, had a value of 48. This three had a value of 12. And then this would just be two ones because it's the ones place. And so if we add that together, that has a value of 62. So 62 in base 10, right, with a little subscript, would actually be equivalent to 332 in base 10. Four, all right? That's what that little subscript underneath that tells you what base you were working with. So again, just kind of a fun challenge zone problem. Fun! Don't worry if you weren't ready for that. If you don't understand it yet, it's okay to fail as long as you learn from it. Instructor Beats, out.